everyone. Welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. Uh, this is the second episode in the uh, basic mold making uh, series, which is in and itself a, uh, a subsection of the, uh, of the larger series about acquiring a new uh, injection molding machine from Boy Machines, a German company, uh, and building a mold, uh, which we're doing now in this series. Uh, and then ultimately we're gonna load that mold that we built and uh, operate this new molding machine and show all the operations. So from kind of start to finish, an injection molding process. And uh, also some good news, uh, I received uh, today the, uh, the new door for this molding machine. Uh, if you go back and check out the first episode, I was a little confused by the large size of the door. Uh, I talked with Boy Machines, uh, who sold the, uh, the molding machine to me, and they indicated uh, that the only way to get this machine to me fast enough, uh, because I had a couple of hot um, molding jobs for my customers, uh, was to send their demo unit off of their floor. Uh, and at the time, they had a small picking robot. Uh, a picking robot pulls the sprue out of the uh, mold um, and then throws it away. Anyway, so they had a, um, a robot loaded into this machine and it needed a larger door. So uh, to facilitate my needs, they actually just shipped this machine um, immediately. Uh, and the follow-up is they, they sent the uh, correct size door. Um, actually, as a great courtesy because they sent the door for free as part of the purchase and they're sending a technician out to swap out the doors. So uh, much thanks to Boy Machines for working with me uh, to get this machine in my hands as fast as possible to get my customers happy and actually facilitate the purchase of the machine. So this is the, uh, the new door that came today, uh, as well as a, a few pipes that were, uh, that were needed to finish the uh, hydraulic core pulls. So those are in this box here. A whole lot of foam nuts in here. Um, yeah, so these pipes will be loaded on uh, by the technician who's coming, as well as this uh, larger or smaller door, uh, uh, which is a stock door. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to get that guy on there. Uh, yeah, so in about a week, uh, we will be ready to load the uh, robot onto the machine. All right, so let's get uh, going on the, uh, the mold making part. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, for this week's added uh, uh, content at the end of the episode, I was thinking of showing some uh, hiking videos of Mission Peak in San Jose. Uh, that's in the Silicon Valley area of, of Northern California. Uh, last uh, spring, so it's pretty interesting. A lot of uh, cattle and turkeys and all sorts of wildlife. So uh, stay tuned to the end of the show and you can see a little bit of uh, hiking the foothills around uh, Silicon Valley in the springtime. All right, so I got the mill going in the background, so it's a little noisy in here. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so we need to deburr this and press in the bearing. So this is the guide hole that will uh, hold the um, ejector plate uh, and allow the ejector pins to slide in and out of these holes here. So let me just deburr this real quick. This is a swivel deburr, you know, kind of a sharp edge there that grabs the edges. Okay. bearings. These are linear plane bearings. Uh, let's see, wrong size. We get the right size. Hmm. One of them. This is the other bearing. Uh, I guess I don't have two lined bearings, so this is a basic uh, aluminum oxide sleeve bearing. Basically, you gotta add oil to it, or grease. Here's a little grease hole right there that you stick the oil in. So we'll make sure that's sticking out so we can access it. bearing. Go 
that in there. Then with our 5 16 injector pins, here's one of them. This injector pin will go through this uh, injector hole in the mold right there, like so. Let's see how the fit is. Nice. nice bounce to it. It's always a good indicator when you hear the when the pop sound and your ejector pin will uh, do air pistoning inside of your uh, mold like that. And when I release my finger, it, it slides down slowly. That's probably about uh, a one ten thousandths clearance on each side uh, of the uh, of the pin and the hole clearance there. So we've pressed in the bearings on the bottom, and these bearings uh, will contain the. Uh, the 3 8 rods which are going to be linked into this uh, bottom plate here which I haven't cut out yet. We're just going to use this as a thickness reference for now uh, so that we can grind our ejector pins. Uh, so uh, this bottom plate here is the foundation for the, uh, the bearing rods uh, and down at the bottom of the bearing rod is this, is this foot here, this uh, kind of that ledge. And what this ledge, oh, let me get it in focus. What this ledge does is uh, it allows a, a second plate to clamp all of these rods onto the ejector plate. So the, the mission next in building this mold is to uh, create the ejector system, uh, which, um, yeah, which is essentially moving these ejector pins to eject the, uh, the plastic part out of the cavity on this side of the mold. So essentially you can just see how this pin is going to knock the part out, uh, this pin and, and another 5/16 ejector pin here. So effectively, we need to make a repeatable, reliable, and accurate mechanism that pushes the part out every time the mold opens and kicks out the uh, plastic part. So I'm just going to eyeball the top of the uh, mold here and say this is what we're going to cut. So this is going to be the rough cut uh, using the uh, die grinder, and then we're going to grind using the surface grinder to get the surface down to the mold cavity surface. So let me go ahead and cut that. So in order to uh, grind our uh, ejector pins to the right height, uh, I went ahead and purchased this uh, this V block or this angle block, uh, which is normally uh, used for setting up round objects on mills or for inspection. Uh, as you can see here, we've got the ejector pin uh, loaded into this V here. And uh, then we've got this, uh, this clamping bolt in a carriage that actually locks the, uh, the ejector pin into place. So the disadvantage of this uh, fixture, uh, wait until the airplane passes. <laughs> That's part of uh, part of my show is uh, constant airplane traffic. Um, anyway, so the uh, the disadvantage of this fixture is that we uh, need to have this uh, this the foot of the ejector pin remain, and uh, it's hard to mount uh, this this fixture as as purchased uh, onto the magnet chuck, which is this guy right here. Uh, let me zoom in on it. Okay, so. Uh, for all those who aren't uh, familiar with surface grinders, uh, this is the grinding wheel inside of a protective hub. And usually surface grinders have a magnet chuck or a mag chuck, and you turn on the magnet by flipping a lever. So when the lever is off and we put our, our flat piece of magnetic material on, uh, we can move it around, but when you turn on the magnet, it's a kind of a mechanical structure that moves a magnet up to the surface. Uh, you can't move it. So uh, the problem that we have, though, is that uh, I can't really I can't really magnet mount this this um, this V block on to grind this surface because we've got the uh, the foot of the ejector pin is interfering. So when I turn on the magnet, 
Nothing really happens because we're not in good contact, so I can pull, lift it right off. So what we need to do is modify this, uh, this purchased uh, V-block uh, by adding an uh, a, a, a undercut here uh, to allow for all various types of ejector pins. And to do that, because this material is uh, hard steel, it's basically as hard as the high-speed steel end mills that you would use to cut this. Uh, we could try to use carbide uh, end mills, but we'd probably um, use up the entire life of the carbide end mill, like a $60 tool to cut one pocket here. But fortunately, uh, I've got a, uh, a Sinker EDM machine, uh, which, is used, uh, which uses electric sparks to cut away uh, hard uh, steel. It'll cut any um, conductive material. Essentially, it just showers the surface of the material with uh, millions of little sparks, and each spark uh, burns off a little chunk of steel at a time. Uh, so let me show that to you and uh, our deviation from our mold making is to modify this fixture so that we can grind larger ejector pins uh, and I can show you how the EDM machine works. So uh, let's check out the EDM machine. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the Sinker EDM, sometimes called a RAM EDM. Uh, it's made by Sodic and it's, uh, it's about I don't know, 20 years old. I bought it used off of uh, someone uh, in Chicago. Uh, but yeah, so how it works is the, the uh, ram in the middle. Well, actually, let me zoom in on, on it so we can look at it better. Actually, I'll just take the camera off the tripod. All right, so looking at the, how this thing works is we've got the, um, this is the magnet base. This is where our work fits. And you can see how I've got our, uh, our V-block already uh, fixtured in on another uh, magnet table here. So the magnet is on, so we can't really move this thing. Uh, and the V-block is in here. And how this uh, system works is that the, uh, the head here, uh, which is this, um, right now there's a brass uh, tool holder in there, uh, is electrified with about 100 volts. And the, uh, the um, magnet chuck here is grounded. And the computer in this uh, Sinker EDM machine essentially uh, controls the voltage to create a bunch of little sparks that occur on mostly copper electrodes. Now you can see I've got a, a copper um, piece of sheet metal in that right, right now. And this piece of sheet metal is basically just used to, to cut a uh, a 1 16th wide by a uh, 3 quarter inch long uh, little deep groove in a piece of hard material, hard steel. So what I'm going to do is uh, set up on, on uh, this machine with a, uh, with a round electrode. Uh, it's going to look similar to uh, this electrode here. Actually this, this electrode is good for just drilling deep holes uh, using electricity. And uh, we will go ahead and uh, countersink our, uh, our uh, V-block there so that we can properly mount it on the grinder and grind some, some uh, ejector pins. So I'll be right back. Oh, and if you want to say hi to Sierra, she's been bugging my, uh, my legs the whole time that we've been talking. <laughs> hi, Sierra. Okay, so I found a, uh, uh, an electrode and a tool holder, which will probably work for us. Uh, just to show you how, how this thing works. Um, this is the bottom of the tool holder and it has these, uh, these steel um, structures, kind of these, these fins that are very hard steel and uh, ground to high precision. And the combination of these fins and the flats on, on the bottom of this, uh, of this tool holder, which I believe this is called a, a combi chuck. Uh, Anyway, these, this structure, this, uh, these vertical surfaces and, and uh, horizontal surfaces reference into the EDM machine uh, using a uh, pull stud, which is this guy right here. So you basically, uh, let's see what the, a good angle is. You, you put the uh, pull stud into the structure here and you spin it. Then you push down this plastic retaining ring. And this is the, uh, the kind of the tool holder. Uh, and then when you uh, load this, this assembly into the EDM machine spindle, you, it kind of pulls it in, kind of like the uh, milling machine does. And, and these tabs reference, and this, these, these four flat areas reference into the chuck of the EDM machine. And it, and it holds this, this assembly, this tool holder, to within like 50 millionths of, a, of, a, of an inch. Uh, it's a very uh, accurate and repeatable positioning. 
which is good in an EDM machine because you're swapping these electrodes out all the time. Uh, and then the electrode itself is just this uh, solid plug of uh, copper here. So I'm going to flip this guy around and there should be just a flat piece of copper on the back. And uh, as you can see, you don't need to go nuts with the fixturing on this stuff. All right, so we're over here at the, uh, the CNC lathe. It's a pretty basic CNC lathe, uh, but it gets, gets the job done. Uh, so we're going to turn the bottom of this uh, piece of copper to be square for our, uh, to get a nice square uh, round pocket uh, for the electrode. Uh, so let's go ahead and load it up here. I've got a uh, collet holder in here right now. So let me just pull this thing out. Just gonna clean up the space uh, so we have a nice flat bottom in our EDM pocket into the into the tooling. And that should do it. Actually, we'll clean up the side too. Seems like the um, oxide layer or the crud on the copper doesn't really affect the EDM machine too much. Uh, the little uh, electric spark discharges seem to blow through all that stuff. So anyway, but it's nice to have. All right, there we go. We get a little. What is that? Oh, that's uh, <laughs> that's from the set screw. I'll clean off a little more of that. That's from the old set screw uh, witness mark uh, when I was using the other side of this piece of copper. It may not actually uh, go deep enough for that. But okay. All right, that should be good enough. Okay, so we're back here on the bench, and we'll go ahead and load our. Uh, our new uh, copper electrode here, as you can see. Make sure the focus is good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. So, so this is the profile that we're going to burn into that V block that uh, that I was just showing you, uh, that we cut on the lathe just now. Uh, so we'll load it into the tool here. Hopefully, we don't run into too many problems. Uh, we'll add back in our our little aluminum spacers um, and. We'll lock down the uh, set screws. There's just enough room for the set screw to touch the, the true shaft of the, or the rough uh, mill shaft of this copper. But since this isn't a precision cut, it doesn't really matter um, if, if, if our cylinder is slightly off axis. We're not cutting the mold or anything. So yeah, here we go. So I'll load this guy into the EDM machine and we'll start uh, burning some steel. <laughs> So, you know, get a better view here. So this machine will, um, uh, essentially when the uh, machining of the electrode is happening, it was gonna be right here, uh, a well uh, uh, rises out of the bottom of the machine and then this whole area is filled with oil, a paraffin oil, a very thin oil. And the oil is called a dielectric fluid and that basically helps aid in the uh, spark uh, gap control. Uh, usually the spark gap, or the, which is the, uh, the space between the copper electrode and the steel that you're machining is typically 3 thousandths or 80 microns. And that gap is filled with this, with this very low viscosity um, oil. And that uh, facilitates the precision uh, spark gap or the milling spark surface that happens between the copper and the steel. Uh, the head of the machine will uh, constantly bounce up and down and that, what it's doing is it's flushing out the burned out steel and bringing in new uh, oil. All right, so we're gonna set the, uh, the tool height here. Uh, and that's basically done by um, the machine uh, uh, is searching for a uh, short circuit. Uh, since this top is always electrified, 
uh, with a sensing voltage and then this part is or the part that we're working on is grounded basically you just bring the uh, the tool down until it makes electrical contact and that tells the uh, EDM machine that that is the location of the tool so it is going to come down I usually like to slow it down when it gets close and it will uh, make a beeping sound and say okay you're in contact so this is the uh, kind of the conversational interface to program the uh, EDM machine. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, basically I'm saying uh, we're going to cut down seven millimeters and the materials used are uh, copper for the electrode and steel for the material. Uh, Lorraine pattern is essentially the, uh, the electrode will uh, machine down, straight down and then start um, orbiting in a circle. Uh, and that helps uh, build out the sidewalls so that the machine can actually blast through the steel faster with a rougher cut and then clean up as a finished cut and that's what the Lorraine pattern is. Uh, and they're asking how big is the thing that you're going to cut and we're saying it's going to be about 15 millimeters in diameter and surface roughness is 12. Uh, that can go anywhere from 1 micron uh, uh, and there's a whole bunch of different specs for surface roughness. But basically we're saying one micron uh, all the way up to 26. And I think that's one micron mean average, uh, but there's like four different ways to define surface roughness. And to be honest, I don't remember what this one is. Uh, but we're gonna do 12. Uh, the rougher the cut uh, or the surface finish, the faster the cut's gonna happen and the more electricity and current is gonna be used. Um, if we did a one micron finish, we could be here for five hours waiting for it to essentially electrically polish the surface. Uh, and then the undersize, uh, you always have to have your electrode smaller than the final shape to allow for the spark gap. And the, the, the more material you cut off, the bigger the, uh, the uh, spark gap is. So right now we've got 0.32 millimeters, uh, which is the spark gap or the undersize. All right, I'm gonna narrate how this uh, program executes when I hit the start button. So I'm gonna hit enter. And then the, uh, the electrode cutter should move to the right position to cut and uh, the standoff position, which is a, a one millimeter above the surface. And now the, uh, the tank door is rising and this contains the, the very low viscosity uh, paraffin oil, which is starting to fill the tank uh, to submerge the work under a, um, a layer of oil. Uh, this layer of oil needs to be high enough so that the sparks from milling don't actually ignite the uh, oil on the surface, uh, you know, when it's combined with oxygen in the air. Uh, so the oil has to be above the cutting plane, which you can see it is. Let me go ahead and zoom in. And now the uh, machine is starting to hop a little bit and it's testing the uh, surface uh, for a good contact. And it'll do that for a while with relatively low current and then when it's happy with uh, what it's sensing, then it will switch into uh, the next mode, which is high current cutting. Maybe I should turn the light off so you can see this better. So it's still sensing. There it's starting to actually do some cutting. Let me focus. There we go. So it's, it's starting to make little bubbles and you can see some wisps of smoke coming off the surface. Uh, I might have to switch to a higher magnification uh, lens, uh, but this is the beginnings of the cut. Uh, let me go ahead and switch lenses. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me zoom in some more. You can get a better view. So yeah, that's basically a, an array of uh, sparks that are that's eating into the steel uh, as we uh, as we watch it here. And then the machine goes through a few. Um, different uh, stages uh, and it's it's constantly deciding what the voltage should look like and how long the spark should be and all of that stuff uh, it's a uh, pretty fascinating how it, it thinks through all this stuff sometimes it'll just pause and make some, some decisions and try some stuff out and if it doesn't like it then it goes to some other idea and it's it's pretty interesting here you can see how it really ramped up the juice uh, to do some uh, more aggressive cutting let me zoom out. And then it stopped and thought and then changed uh, to a higher power setting. And now it's really cranking away. 
and it's just blasting, uh, blasting away steel now as we watch it. You can see some of the wispy uh, black stuff in the oil. That's basically uh, atomized steel and copper. We're actually a little close to the top. Uh, we may actually see some uh, green fire shoot out. So now it's really cutting. <laughs> I zoom out a little bit. So this is the EDM process, making a lot of smoke and a lot of uh, soot in the oil. Uh, behind the EDM machine is a big filter that filters out all the impurities in the oil and then uh, produces clean oil again. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll see some green fire shooting out. Or maybe I'll set it up so we can see some green fire shooting out. This uh, sinker EDM machine has a fire suppression system in it. So there's a sensor and if it gets too hot, then it unloads an entire uh, canister of uh, fire extinguisher. And basically we'll fill half the shop with, uh, with like fire extinguisher powder and, and, and CO2. So I'd rather not do that because it's probably expensive to replace that and clean. But um, I don't know, maybe I'll set it up so we can see some fire shooting off. I'll have to check with, uh, with management to see if we can do that. <laughs> and that's what happens when uh, your oil's not high enough. So the result of uh, the EDM process is this uh, cutout pocket, uh, which actually turned out pretty nice. Okay, here we are over at the grinder. So we'll go ahead and set this thing up. I'll start off with uh, turning the magnet off. And then we'll place our fixture onto the mag table. I've already wiped down the table. And then we can stick our uh, ejector pin into the slot there and then stick our hold down clamp and go a little bit below the surface and tighten it up and then uh, engage the magnet and make sure that's fully engaged yeah I go a little further so now we can't really move this ejector pin uh, so the next step would be to grind the top so let's Raise up the grinder. I've already dressed the stone. I'll come over. You got to be careful about how you enter your work uh, with a grinder so you don't fling the part off or, or jam your part into the stone. But right now we're still focused on uh, figuring out the height of the ejector pins. So you can see this pin is the one that we just ground uh, and it's sticking up and it's slightly above the mold surface. And then this other pin is one that I've still roughed in but haven't uh, ground the, the size yet. Let me zoom in. You can see how good the zoom is on this thing. So, uh, so you can see, essentially, uh, we got to measure the difference here uh, once everything's seated and grind off uh, to make the top of this pin to make it flush with the top of the mold cavity. So this, this is probably not the best way to uh, measure this, but this is how I'm doing it today. Uh, we're going to use these calipers, the end of the depth, uh, or the, the depth measurement of the caliper. You know, there's like a basically a little tip here that, that uh, extends and gives you a measurement. Uh, I really need a good pair of depth mics, but I don't really have that at the moment. So, but 
This is pretty good. I'm seeing uh, 16 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I'm saying it in thousandths because that grinder has uh, empirical units. So, yeah, 16 thousandths. So I need to take 16 thousandths off the tip of this ejector pin so that it is flush with the mold cavity. And you can see it popping up there. So, uh, go back to the uh, grinder and do that. But it's pretty good, uh, you can, it's a pretty good feel. It's nice and smooth. There's no play in it. And you can see how, uh, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but there's basically, it's a nice smooth action and no gap, but it's not jamming up. So that's, that's, that's a good thing. Oh, and you can see the direction of the grind by how I spin the ejector pin. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up all these ejector pins and uh, we'll be back to finish the, uh, the plate uh, or the ejector plate that actuates the pins. Well, that looks like it's going to be a wrap for this week. Uh, my voice is starting to go, so uh, it's kind of hard to do a YouTube video without any voice. Uh, but, uh, so stay tuned to next week. Uh, we're going to finish the mold assembly and I think I'm also going to do a uh, field trip, uh, a tour of my uh, brother's machine shop on the East Coast, uh, and thus a Thanksgiving trip as well. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned and, uh, and also stick around to see some of that footage of the Mission Valley uh, peaks uh, last spring that I mentioned, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, have a good weekend and a good Thanksgiving too. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>